Good evening, and welcome to my daily Facebook Live, episode number 619. And the topic today is, your Valentine's Day could end in heartbreak, and what to do. So this is a preliminary, I should say a preemptive <laughs> invitation, but I'll get to that in a moment. So before I jump into the topic, let me introduce myself and we'll get started. And also explain why I do these talks. Um, my name is Barry Selby. I'm a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert. And I help women particularly, and occasionally men who want help as well, find balance in love, life, and business. And that changed because of what I had yesterday. So watch yesterday's broadcast to, to, for the explainer of why I've changed that introduction. I'm also a passionate champion of the divine feminine, which drives my work, my mission, my heart, my focus. It also is what led to these talks that I started over two years ago, called Messages from the Masculine Inspiring Your Feminine Heart. Today's episode is number 619. I've done a few of these. And by the way, these are Facebook Lives that are usually at 5 p.m. Pacific time, but I have some things to do today, so I'm finally getting to do it at 7 p.m. instead. So in case you're wondering why it's not the usual time, it's then, and if you're watching the replay, you don't even care. Um, but normally join me at 5 p.m. Pacific time on my personal page on Facebook, and if you're watching the replay on YouTube, that's where it starts, it's on Facebook. I'll give you those links at the back end. So let's jump into this, shall we? So again, sorry, the topic, I need to reintroduce that. So again, episode 619, the topic is your, um, your Valentine's Day may end in heartbreak and what to do. <sighs> I need to disavow some people of some perceptions about Valentine's Day. Um, I was reading a post by a friend of mine that reminded me that St. Valentine's um, was a hero for love, but he also was a sacrifice for love. He, the story of St. Valentine's is not pretty, in fact, it's kind of gory. I'm not gonna explain it here, but bottom line is he sacrificed himself for love in a very unfortunate way. Meanwhile, we have Valentine's Day happening on Thursday that is all about pink and purple and red heart shapes, chocolates, roses, fancy dinners, expensive prices, and a lot of money for Hallmark. And it is a Hallmark holiday. So that's what is the biggest day, I think it's the biggest day of the year for them financially. So Valentine's Day is really commercial. So that's one thing I'm putting on the table up front because for a lot of people, they hold out for Valentine's Day to be the perfect day for love and romance and, and intimacy and everything else. And it doesn't always work out that way. So that's first thing I wanna to do to burst a few bubbles, <laughs> perhaps. Secondly, uh, sorry, let me sidebar number one first. I am also an incubable romantic, so don't think about the fact I'm being a realist and blowing up the whole romantic notion. I'm just saying Valentine's Day is not an excuse to be romantic one day a year. I'll come back to that one later on. Okay, back on track. Number two, there's a lot of pressure on people. I should put it this way. There's a lot of pressure on men for Valentine's Day to be a special occasion for their ladies. So for people who are already in a relationship, already dating, courting, getting to know each other, Valentine's, Valentine's Day creates a lot of pressure. For example, if you're a woman going out with a guy you've been out going out for a couple of months, he may be going through his head like, what do I have to do for Valentine's Day? Do something special, do I have to buy her chocolates, buy her dinner, buy her jewelry? All this stuff is going through his head because of the fact that Valentine's Day has been presented as a make or break day for romance. So ladies, just understand this from, men, from, from a men's point of view that Valentine's Day is a lot of undue pressure because of what something somebody else called Hallmark set up for them. If you're a woman and you're in a relationship with a man or you go out with a man, it doesn't... Now, if you're setting yourself up to get something good for, for Valentine's Day and you're punishing a man for this, I don't recommend that as a good approach for a healthy relationship. But I do invite you to talk to your man to either help him narrow his focus to be specific in a good way or to take him off the hook. Because the thing about Valentine's Day is it's one day a year that, again, some commercial organizations made into a very fancy day that is a lot of pressure on it for men and women to be romantic, particularly for men to show women how committed they are, for example. It's a pain to wait for that one day for that to happen. If you, if you're, if you meet somebody in a relationship with them, you start in, in, in late February, and then a whole year goes by. It's gonna take you all the next February to prove your love. That seems effed up, to be blunt. So my, um, <laughs> that's number two. So my suggestion on this one is to take the pressure off of Valentine's Day, to in a way spread it out. Because the reality of this thing is that when you put the pressure into one place, it's a make or break day and some negative things can happen. Hearts can get broken, as I mentioned in the title, because of the fact that there's expectations 
and there's efforts that don't always mesh with each other. So Valentine's Day is a dangerous place to play because of the fact that, first of all, well, two things on that one. First of all, romance doesn't know a timeline. You can be romantic anytime you want to be. Secondly, because again of expectations, you might have your ideas of what should happen based on your partner's um, presence in your life, that may be blown away too. And to have your, your relationship basically destroyed by Valentine's Day is not anybody's ideal, but it does happen for people because there's such a pressure and assumption and mind programming going on to say, well, Valentine's Day is special, therefore these things should happen. And when they don't, you feel pissed off, upset, and heartbroken. Not recommended. So, I'm trying to think, I did part I one and two, part one, part two, to get part two. I'm losing track of my points, so hopefully this is all making sense at the same time. The other part is, well, this is, this is, this is number two. Okay, no, this is part two of number two. Just, rem just get my head straight around this one. A romantic gesture is something that I highly recommend is done spontaneously and regularly. If you're in a relationship, if you're courting, if you're going out with somebody, showing romantic efforts, being willing to express your devotion, your love, your attention in random things, every day of the year or every week of the year, however you want to do it, is better than just doing it one day. And again, Valentine's Day has been pushed a lot of pressure on to do big things. That's why a lot of engagements happen on Valentine's Day. But I don't suspect a lot of marriages actually come from those engagements because Valentine's Day pressure can cause a, well, heartbreak and disruption and breakup later on. So I would choose, I would choose to make your, um, if you're looking at relationships, if you're in a relationship, I would choose to put your engagement ring surprise engagement thing on a better day like the anniversary when he went out not on valentine's day again valentine's day has enough pressure on it as it is i just stick to the chocolate and roses frankly <laughs> the, the thing also you may be aware of is that valentine's day like certain other holidays of the year it's one of the prices go up at restaurants they do valentine's day specials where the food is actually three times the price and you're getting no better food that to me is a bad idea so i recommend it for valentine's day is if you want to have something fun and joyful and nice and something that brings you together is if it's nice weather go for a picnic if it's not nice weather do a picnic indoors do something so creative for yourselves we can be together in intimacy without rent fancy restaurants and lots of expenses and lots of people bugging you when you can have a private intimate space to be together to share and celebrate a meal that you maybe create yourself buy yourself the day before or whatever you do and then you have no worries about getting, you have to get done to get on the table. You can be, you can take as long as you want. You don't have to be tied to a restaurant schedule. You don't have to worry about dressing up and going anywhere. You can dress up and be at home if you want. But doing something like that, again, takes the pressure off of Valentine's Day. It makes Valentine's Day a fun, playful, romantic experience without all the pressure, again, of Hallmark, of all those restaurants, of all that uh, wait staff, and all these other people like and trying to outdo each other. Valentine's Day can be something very enjoyable if you set, let yourself have fun with it. That's another piece, but that's number three. Yeah, number three. So to avoid, no, it's not to avoid, to not, re, not, to not be in the line of fire for a heartbreak, following those three ideas may help you get on track to actually have more fun, more joy and ease on Valentine's Day. Now, switching gear slightly, let's speak to the singles. For those of us, including myself, who are single on Valentine's Day, it can be a very weird day because everyone else is supposed to be suddenly in love. You may feel this sudden inordinate pressure that you don't have something all your friends do. Forget about that. As easy as, it sounds easy, it sounds easy and it probably is. But my recommendation is that you learn as a person to fall in love with yourself. Because Valentine's Day is about love. There was no rules that said Valentine's Day is about loving somebody else. So if you're single, my, high, my, my highest recommendation or my um, conscious recommendation is not to think about okay who can I call and phone up for a last minute date on Valentine's Day don't do that it's it's it comes from um, what's what I was looking for um, neediness <laughs> it, it comes from a place of um, wanting to fit in when you don't really feel fit in which is again that's a lack of love by the way all these different things that don't work so when you take Valentine's Day as a choice as a single person to love yourself more Maybe you cook yourself a nice meal. Maybe you take yourself out for dinner. But again, I'm not a big fan of going to restaurants where they charge three times the fee for the same food because it's Valentine's Day. But do something nice for yourself on Valentine's Day that you feel is romantic and loving for yourself. Maybe it's a bubble bath. 
Maybe it's um, ordering in some great food delivered to your house. Maybe it's going out with friends for a beer. Whatever it is that makes you feel good. I have a suggestion because I, I have a guided self-love meditation which I offer on my website. I'll put a link in the comments for that. You can start with that now and or on Valentine's Day. But self-love is a key practice for single people because one, it takes away that pressure to find somebody else. Two, you won't need the energy from somebody else because you're filling up yourself first. And three, okay, you could do these th list of three. And three, it makes you more attractive. Say what? Yes. When you love yourself from a very heartfelt place, I don't mean ego-driven, look at me, look at me, but from a heartfelt, self-love, respectable place, you become more attractive to everybody else. Because when you're loving and loving who you are, you become loving to other people as well. That's one of the best kept secrets of love, by the way. That's your Valentine's Day tip on top of everything else. So I'm thinking that's pretty much everything I want to say because the reality is self-love is the core of everything that I talk about. And being aligned to your um, vision of love, if you're single, to focus on how to love yourself more, that's a primary focus for Valentine's Day. So again, if you're in a relationship, I gave you three keys of what to do to take off that pressure, that precipitous risk of heartbreak because things don't work out the way you planned. If you're single, on the other side, which I talk about, is about really learning to love yourself. And again, do things for yourself when you're single and do not be desperate trying to find a date for Valentine's Day because that, I tried that a long time ago. It wasn't fun. And so I'm saying from personal experience, don't do that. And so avoiding heartbreak, because the other part of this is when you get rejected, let me talk about that one for a second. Hmm. So it's like getting a prom date for the American people. I'm not from <laughs> I'm not from these parts, so I don't remember. I didn't have a prom when I was at school. But prom dates were this thing about you had to find the right person. And sometimes you wouldn't get the choice you wanted, so you'd be disappointed. It's more pressure in some ways for Valentine's Day. For some people, they put this pressure on themselves saying, oh my God, it's four days to Valentine's Day. Let me go find someone. Let's call someone. I'll go on a date with somebody. Bad move. It's not healthy. Again, Valentine's Day, as I said at the beginning, is a hallmark holiday. It is a financially advantageous day for restaurants, for Hallmark cards, for chocolates and roses, and other things like that too. It's not designed to help you have love. You'd be better off watching a, a, a romantic movie on the Hall, on Hallmark Channel, <laughs> inappropriately, on that day instead. Because Valentine's Day is just a day of the week. It's not even a weekend. It's on a Thursday. Hang on, Thursday 10... Yes, on a third, just read my head. Valentine's this year is on a Thursday. How romantic is Thursday? <laughs> it doesn't make sense. So my recommendation again is do things that are conducive to loving for yourself. And if you're in a relationship, conducive for loving for your partner as well. Do things that are easy, that are fun, that are playful and romantic because that's where it's birthed from. And to be blunt, reject all that whole Valentine stuff. Yeah, if you want to get hearts and stuff, you can do that too. But the thing is, just so you know, if you didn't realize this, <laughs> this is a little sales thing. If you are thinking about going to buy these keepsakes and wonderful things for Valentine's Day, go shopping the day after Valentine's Day because that's when the sales come up. Because if everything's pushed out for Valentine's Day for the week before, so right now through Thursday, all these great things are on sale to get your attention, but they're, up, they're priced up, same as the restaurants are priced up for Valentine's Day. You're better off if you want to get keepsakes, things that are of value and you want to keep, Get them after Valentine's Day when their sale comes out because the prices will drop. They want to get rid of the inventory. That's a sales tip, or as a buyer's tip for you. <laughs> Shopper's tip, we can say that. So that's a few clues, some insights, some ideas if you're a couple or a single person, how to have a more successful, enjoyable, romantic Valentine's Day without the heartbreak. You're welcome. Uh, again, I'll put a link in the comments for the self-love self practice because that will help you if you're someone who's single for Valentine's Day. And if you have any questions or comments about this broadcast, please put them below in, in this broadcast on Facebook or if you're watching the YouTube replays, same thing on there. And, when, and talking about that, I'll give you the links for the replays. As again, I do this every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time on my personal page on Facebook, which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby. I also put the replays onto my business page on Facebook first, which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby dot author. I then put them onto my YouTube channel, which is also Barry Selby. You can search for me there or you go to Facebook, oh, sorry, go to youtube.com forward slash user forward slash Barry Selby. Find me there and subscribe to my channel. And on there is a playlist called Messages from the Masculine. We can find all the replays on YouTube. And finally, I have a podcast that I'm building out slowly, also called Messages from the Masculine, that's on iTunes. 
You can subscribe, subscribe to that too and download the audio versions of my talks. And listen to them when you wish. If you're stuck in the area of love, if you're feeling a bit heartbroken or worried about love again because you've been wounded in the past, I do offer a discovery session, particularly for the women, that can help you get some clarity, some guidance, and some next steps. I'll put the link for that in the comments as well. And if nothing else, take care of yourself, love yourself, and appreciate yourself every day, and especially on Valentine's Day. With that, I thank you for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow at 5 p.m. Pacific time. It may be Valentine's Day related since we're getting the countdown towards Valentine's Day. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. I appreciate you watching, appreciate you being with me as always, and I'll see you again tomorrow. Take care of yourselves. You deserve the best. Remember that you deserve the best. I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.